गुड मॉर्निंग विल टेक अप द टॉपिक ऑफ द डे सो द वेरी फास्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इज रिगार्डिंग द एनवायरमेंट बिकॉज रिसेंटली द सी ओ पी ट्वेंटी सेवन वॉज ओवर एंड सो इन टूडेज न्यूज सो देर आर सम topics which are environmentally related and we will take up those topics first so first is uh, this is about the wildlife india's unusual abstention in the sites vote on reopening ivory trade this news is relating to a proposal regarding reopening of the ivory trade okay to protect the wildlife ivory trading has been pro in, in banned for many years fine right? ivory trading so globally has been banned for many years fine right? and aaj it is going to be reopened so this is the discussion regarding that so ban on ivory trading what so ban on ivory trading fine right. indian unusual abstention in the sites c i t e s sites so sites stands for so it it it, it is site in the full form of convention on international trade in endangered species convention on international trade in endangered species the decides and the challo hello okay so india's unusual abstention in the sites vote on reopening the ivory trade although increasingly squeeze for space and support in the crowded land the elephant remains one of india's most powerful cultural and religious symbol and government of india has declared elephant as the national heritage animal fine remember this elephant has been declared as india's national heritage animal by the government of india so we are very much concerned about the protection of elephant and we have even launched the project elephant okay for this purpose so the project elephant has been launched by government of india so elephant is considered as a, a cultural and religious symbol and uh, its presence is auspicious and it is used in many uh, cultural and religious festivals in different states okay and uh, in the southern southern states so elephant is more used in the uh, religious functions of the uh, temples fine so government has declared elephant as a national heritage animal a pioneer in banning even the domestic trade in ivory in 1986 india has always been at the forefront of the global elephant conservation initiative so any initiative taken globally for elephant conservation india is at the forefront because elephant is considered as the sacred animal and government has given it the tag of national heritage animal in india i can say elephant is given the status of what national heritage animal okay uh that is why india's decision not to vote against a proposal to reopen the international trade in ivory at the ongoing conference of the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora surprised surprised many okay so the sites convention has its own uh, conference of party meeting where a proposal was moved okay by some african country like namibia botswana south african zimbabwe this move was moved by south south african country like namibia african country like namibia botswana south africa and zimbabwe or elephant population is much higher was defeated by 83 by 15 in panama city recently 
at the convention held in Panama, the proposal to reopen the Ivory Trade was uh, cancelled. Fine, it was rejected. Not got the sufficient approval for this. Fine. So, the, what is the site's agreement? The site is an international agreement between government at present 184 members to ensure that international trade in wild animals and plants does not threaten the survival of the species. So, so the site convention ensure that international trade in endangered species of animal and plants does not threaten their survival. The convention entered into force in 1975. The site convention, the site CITES convention entered into force in 1974 and India became the 25th member of this party okay, in 1976, the next year. All import, export and re-export, right? Remember this import, export and re-export of species cover under sites must be authorized through a permit system. So any of these trading must be authorized through a permit system okay, as per the site convention. The site appendix 1 lists species threatened with extinction. Remember this word appendix 1 of the sites, appendix 1. List species threatened with extinction. Those species on the verge of extinction are placed in schedule 1 or appendix 1. Import or export permits for these are issued rarely and only if the purpose is not primarily commercial. Okay, research purpose or any other purpose, this is permitted. But if it has no commercial uh, avenue, then possibility of export is there. But site appendix one uh, species, okay, so they are branded as threatened with extinctions, so they are import and export permits are very rarely issued and uh, maybe it was issued for research purpose, preservation, preservation purpose, but nowhere commercial angle can be uh, a ground for its uh, permission on this. Fine. Then moving next, site appendix 2. So appendix 1, so then we will go to the appendix 2. Site appendix 2 include species not necessarily threatened with extinction but in which trade must be strictly regulated so appendix one is related to species on the verge of extinction or threatened with extinction and appendix two so they are not uh, threatened with, with extinction but their number is falling fine so that is why it is must be strictly regulated every two years the conference of the parties to the sites the supreme decision making body of sites applies a set of biological and trade criteria to evaluate proposals from parties to decide if a species should be in appendix 1 or 2. Fine. So, every two years, the site convention members, they uh, uh, sit, they meet and they decide on the new parameters to be uh, issued globally for the protection and preservation to the wild animal and plants fine so because so uh, so every two year the status is uh, regulated fine uh, then about the ice uh, that the tussle over the ivory the international ivory trade was a globally banned in 1989 okay uh, when all african elephants population were put in sites appendix okay because you know so uh, majority of the ivory trade are from the African elephants. So when the African elephants was added to the uh, annexure one of sites, so trading of ivory in any form around the world come to a grinding halt. Because prior to that, African elephant uh, were uh, means so that ivory from the African elephants were traded. But once the African elephants come under the uh, sites convention. So, the complete export, import, or trade of ivory was, uh, it came under the scooting and, and it was cancelled. Okay. However, the population of Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe were transferred to Appendix 2 in 1997 because of the increasing number. And South Africa in 2000, year 2000, to allow the two uh, 
one of cell in 1999 and 2008 a fibrosis is stock filed from natural elephant death and seizure from poachers so on to of uh, means cell was permitted okay one of cell was permitted so where the ivory collected from the death of the uh, elephants or from the seizures from the poacher that those who uh, kill the animals okay for ivory so to, to disposing them so uh, one of cell was allowed in 1999 and 2008 okay that means natural death of elephants led to the uh, reclamation of the ivory similarly so the uh, illegal poaching uh, and killing of the elephant for the ivory once those stock are seized by the enforcement authority so they come to the state custody fine and uh, they have to be auctioned otherwise they have to be destroyed okay by burning or some other activity so that one of cell allowed in 1989 and 2008 uh, was for Zimbabwe uh, okay so and uh, Zimbabwe was to one and Zimbabwe, uh, Zimbabwe Namibia and South Africa for allowing them to sell the stockpile ivory in their reserve fine then the next okay subsequently namibia's proposal for allowing a regular uh, form of control trade in ivory by delisting the elephant population of the four countries from appendix 2 was rejected at cop 17 to the sites protocol and cop 18 to the sites protocol and at the ongoing cop 19 uh, the proposal was moved by Zimbabwe but made the same fit. But since last few years, these four African countries, so they are putting the proposal to allow uh, regulated uh, sale of ivory. But every time, this is facing the same uh, response from the global community. The four southern African countries argue that their elephant population have bounced back and that their stockpile ivory if sold internationally can generate much needed revenue for elephant conservation and incentive hygiene the communities but how they justify they justify so they have a stockpile of the ivory in their reserve if those stockpile ivory are sold that will generate enough of money so that money can be spent for that elephant conservation measures and also will be uh, helping the communities okay who are involved in this elephant conservation initiative launched by the respective countries opponent of the ivory trade counter that any form of supply stock demand and that sharp spike in elephant poaching were recorded across the globe after the one of sale allowed by sites in 1999 and 2008 it has been it has been uh, alleged that once the one of cell was allowed, so killing of animal in those countries increased. That means people intentionally killed the elephants to collect their collect the ivory from them. That means in case the trade is again permitted, so uh, natural death will be as usual, but the killing of this elephant will increase because to get uh, price to get a substantial amount so uh, illegal uh, killing of the elephant uh, will grow like anything and it may again affect the total population of elephants in those countries fine the four southern african states argue that the elephant population have bounced back and their stockpile ivory should okay opponent of the ivory trade counter that any form of supply stocks demand that the sharp spike in elephant poaching were recorded across the globe fine so once it is permitted so poaching of wild elephants uh, in the world so this was uh, this has seen an uh, increasing trend okay then india on the ivory trade what is india's view the endangered asian elephant was included in sites appendix one thereby prohibiting complete uh, ban on the trade in 1975 which banned the export of ivory from the Asian range countries. In 1986, India amended the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 to ban even domestic sale of ivory. Fine. 
After the ivory trade was globally banned, India again amended the law to ban the import of African ivory in 1991. No ivory can be imported to India. Fine. In 1981, when India hosted the COP3 of the Sites Convention, India designated the iconic Sites logo in the form of an elephant. Over the years, India's stand has been unequivocal on the ivory issue. It remains very much clear that no permission for any sort of ivory trading to be allowed in the country. Fine. That is India's stand. In 1992, COP8 in uh, Kuwaito, Japan, India delegates uh, Arin Bose, the then director of the Project Tiger, noted a polarization of parties. Okay. Uh, one of sustainable use and trade in wildlife and other favoring total ban and stricter control with the latter fortunately outnumbering the former. In 1994 COP9 at Laudable uh, Dela USA, okay, so what is India's view? India opposed the downlisting of elephant population of South Africa from appendix 1 to 2. India has banned, opposed it. At the COP10 at Harare, Zimbabwe, India opposed the proposal to downlist the southern African elephant population, expressing concern over repercussions for the Asian elephant, particularly with the regard to poaching. That means, so if this trading is allowed, so the poaching activity of Asian elephants will increase. That was India's stand. In 2000 COP11 at uh, Gigri, Kenya, India moved a proposal along with the host country to uplist all elephant population in appendix 2 to appendix 1. So, uplift means all will be uplifted from appendix 2 to appendix 1. So, that will put ban on any sort of trade in wild elephants. Right. So, that is what. So, India's stand is always for protection of the wild elephants so all over the country not only in african country but all over the world fine uh, at cop 17 and 18 india voted against proposal to reopen trade in ivory from the southern african states in johannesburg south africa in 2017 india expressed its willingness to share their experience of protecting elephants and supporting rural development without recourse to trade in ivory because you know, so India uh, uh, had the uh, forest cover and many community live inside the forest, okay. And uh, government of India has uh, started involving the local community in forest development, forest regeneration and protection of the wildlife with adequate livelihood for them. So this was cited by India as a model for others that how the Indian initiative without the ivory trade is able to arrange fund for the protection of the wildlife. This can be taken as a model for other countries so they can uh, launch more program for the wildlife protection. Fine. Uh, after uh, protracted negotiation, India signed an agreement in July 2022 with Namibia to fly the cheetah. Recently, cheetah came to that uh, uh, forest in Gujarat. Okay. Kullo National Park in Gujarat, where the uh, Namibian cheetah were reintroduced. It is a very highlighted program because after long gap, cheetah which was extinct from India has been reintroduced. Okay, and the cheetah fly from uh, Namibia in special carriage, special flight was arranged for them, and so they are released. And in the last three months, there is substantial progress in their uh, compatibility with a different environment. Fine. In October 2022, India has agreed to promote sustainable utilization and management of biodiversity by supporting advances in this area of bilateral cooperation at international forum, including meeting of the sites. Okay. While the word ivory was not mentioned, Namibia sought India's support under this ag agreement for the long-standing proposal to reopen the ivory traded sites. So once Namibia provided the uh, wild cheetah to India or African cheetah to India. So it was uh, the agreement was signed for development of the wildlife and based on that so uh, Namibia is expecting that India will not oppose the uh, proposal 
where as a co uh, promoter to give the scope for uh, permitting uh, trading the uh, ivory by those four african countries but india's uh, that abstention from this voting surprise even the country like namibia from where we have uh, got the price cheetahs for the introduction in india recently by So, as per the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India has not received any written communication from the Republic of Namibia regarding lifting um, of ban on ivory trade. So, although the relation is good and we have received this wild cheetah from them, but there is no such communication from the organizers, from that uh, Namibian government regarding the present its proposal to allow ivory trading because so that government has officially not communicated anything to government of India okay uh, soliciting India support on its proposal to reopen the ivory trade because so they have plenty of ivory danger from the natural uh, death animal uh, like uh, uh, natural death elephants as well as from the seizure from the poachers who so kill the elephants for the ivory fine Though the uh, agreement signed between the government of Republic of Namibia and government of India uh, includes wildlife uh, conservation and sustainable uh, biodiversity utilization at one of its area of operation, this cannot be constructed as support for lifting the ban on trading endangered species. Okay, so trading endangered species something different, and the new provisions added uh, by this. is completely different so they cannot be compared at all because the content are different the objective different the purpose different for both of them so they cannot be compared at all fine moreover in november 19 when the proposal on ivory trade was put to vote at cop 19 india chose to abstain and not vote against it neither india voted nor india uh, for or against other india decided to abstain from voting so This this that uh, this this manifest that India is concerned about not to allow further trade in ivory globally. Fine. Then uh, COP twenty seven uh, one hit and many wishes. So this is this is about the uh, recently concluded conference of party the twenty seven conference of party to the Kyoto Protocol on climate change. Fine. Recently. This uh, Kyoto uh, Protocol uh, that is parties or conference of parties, the Kyoto Protocol, okay, nineteen ninety seven. So uh, they meet uh, in in uh, okay okay. So uh, and to discuss the major challenges before the environment. Okay, the decision to set up a Loss and damage fund. Which fund? Remember this. A new fund has been proposed, named as the loss and damage fund. Has been earn uh, in confidence of the a place among major milestones in global climate change response. But on many other front, the final agreement delivered little. The agreement was reached on 20th November, uh, 2022. Are the Indian Climate Service in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt? Okay, the 27th COP was going was held at Egypt, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. Okay, so to so and there the participating nations agreed to create a loss and damage fund. Which fund? Loss and damage fund uh, to pay the most vulnerable nation from climate related disasters. This fund will be uh, will. Will be will collect money and that money will be paid to the countries so uh, who have been affected by the uh, that disastrous effect of the climate change and most of them will be definitely from the underdeveloped and the developing country because the developed countries have established their own or created their own infrastructure which are climate resilient but these poor countries underdeveloped countries so they are unable to. Develop that uh, environmental compatible uh, structures, so which will be less affected by the climate that climate induced uh, natural calamities. Fine. Uh, 
a transitional committee will provide suggestions for the establishment of the fund and will handle important issues including who will manage the fund whether contribution from substantial uh, emerging countries are anticipated and what the fair protection of the, uh, donors will be how much the donor will pay what the protection they will get and how this fund is to be used okay so a transnational trans transitional committee will provide suggestions on all these issue okay but uh, ultimately so this amount to be contributed by the developed country will be spent for the less developed countries this is a noble initiative at the uh, cop 27 at sarman said in egypt what is this loss and damage the phrase refers to the cost already being incurred from climate fueled weather extremes or impact like rising sea levels okay so climate fund so far has founded on cutting 2020 co2 emissions while a third of it went towards helping community adapt to the future impact that is what loss and damage funding is expected to cover the cost of damage that country cannot afford or adapt it okay cost of damage will be added to that and a report by us vulnerable uh, country estimated that their combined climate inked losses in the last two decades total uh, 525 billion or 29% of their collaborative gdp this is coupled with uh, to go uh, up to uh, 580 billion per year by 2030 the vulnerable countries and uh, campaigners argue that rich country that cause the bulk of the climate change with their historical greenhouse gas emission should pay for the uh, fund to be created to protect the future okay so what is this uh, cop 27 and the uh, of, of 27 uh, and cop of loss and uh, damages So at this COP 27, the discussion on loss and damage was made, but there is no consensus on this. Fine. So what is the challenge? Fine. The three-decade-old initiative uh, uh, has been uh, has made some progress, which uh, was first started by the island nations of Vanuatu and the alliance of small island states, because. the island states are going to be the first victim of the climate change because the rising sea level will inundate them so they are much worried about their own physical existence once the uh, human induced climate change come to its uh, go beyond the normal uh, uh, manifestation so that will be so putting the country especially the island nations in much disorder fine the loss and damage are those that cannot be mitigated by rejecting uh, reducing greenhouse gas emission or adopted to modify practices uh, to buffer against climate change impact okay so to create the buffer which will be protecting uh, the country or the domain from the climate change compensations of the fines for the climate change okay and that was also been discussed okay loss and damage okay then the most vulnerable poor nations who are currently suffering the most from uh, natural disasters linked to climate change okay natural disaster linked to climate change okay as a major calamity right now we will uh, now have a uh, separate fund set set up after investments so uh, the most 
vulnerable poor nations who are currently suffering the most from natural disasters linked to climate change will now have a separate fund set uh, aside for compensation addition to the financial loss to poverty they also involve loss of livelihood the eradication of biodiversity okay and the demolition of culturally significant locations this increase the potential of impacted country to seek compensation the country as per this uh, loss and damage provisions will seek compensation from the international agency okay concept the program on action taken uh, action to keep temperature from rising beyond 1.5 degree of pre industrial level was limited which was agreed at the uh, paris climate talk in 2015 has not yet been properly implemented three um, uh, uh, impasses countries to exist now developed nations okay so uh,
so the language pass at thermal six simply commits to the creation of a form a uh, future cop meeting will need to discuss how it will be set up and most critically who will contribute and how much one will contribute which country will contribute and how much will the country will contribute even though uh, belgium and uh, scotland have only made token donations to such fund it is believed that uh, okay it is this this loss and damage uh, worth more than 500 billion at present and if this uh, amount is generated look at so how much is to be paid by those countries and what is the importance of this particular fund fine and then uh, the european union push hard during negotiation this year to include china uh, the arab states and the big emerging countries which may include india because they were major emitters right now this creates a new opportunity for conflict at cop in the future and the uh, that loss and damage fund may take years to start making a real difference because just a third of committed uh, climate financing has reached developing country through the green climate fund initiative so earlier at the uh, uh, that uh, paris climate agreement the green climate fund was established what green climate fund to which every year the developed country Have to contribute hundred billion dollar, but this is not forthcoming. They are not giving it, and when this fund is not getting adequate response, so how to this loss and damage fund? Okay, and who will contribute? How much will contribute? And and how this money will given to whom? When while the progress is gradual, nation must maintain their momentum and uh, put up more effort to make sure that COP continue to serve as credible catalyst rather than being uh, occasions for. Uh, Eric uh, Victory so which who own uh, who lost this should not be the point rather so what is the major outcome or how they are able to uh, bring consensus on this most important issue that should be taken into consideration more fine then the next topic uh, will be regarding uh, uh, the summary of this some of the other key outcome this cop 27 a uh, technology uh, cop 27 saw the launch of a new five year work program at cop 27 to promote climate technology solutions in developing countries climate technology solution in developing countries what remember this the major outcome so promote climate technology solution in developing countries a uh, mitigation cop 27 significantly advanced the work on mitigation okay a mitigation work program was launched in sarman sec Aim that urgently scaling of mitigation uh, ambition and implementation. Okay, the work program will start immediately following COP 27 and continue until 2030 with uh, at least two global dialogue held each year. Fine. So work program will start very soon. Government were also requested to revisit and uh, strengthen the COP 30 target uh, in their national climate plans by the end of 2023 as well as. accelerate efforts to phase down uh, on abated coal power because right now target uh, of the global issue is the coal based power plants and phase out uh, inefficient fossil fuel subsidies like the subsidy on kerosene etc being given in country like india so these inefficient uh, fossil fuel subsidies are to be phased out by the member country so to save the environment from further damage fine the decision text recognize that the unprecedented global energy crisis underlying the urgency to rapidly transform energy system to be more secure reliable and resilient by accelerating clean and just transition to renewable energy during this critical decade of action global stock uh, stock tech delegates at the un climate change conference uh, cop27 work of the second technical uh, dialogue of the first global stock a mechanism to reach ambitions under the paris agreement the un secretary general will uh, convey a climate ambition summit in 2023 okay ahead of the uh, conclusion of the stock stock uh, stock stack of the cop28 next year so it has been agreed that the un uh, uh, secretary general okay will uh, convey a meeting on the climate ambition summit that is in the 2023 before the next cop 28 so to uh, find the modalities for the target based uh, action by the member countries fine 
so uh, the next topic will be uh, what are the other announcement the country launch a package of 23 new collaborative action by five key areas so power road transport steel hydrogen and agriculture where so uh, pollution uh, is normally more uh, projected un secretary general antonio guterres announced usd 3.1 billion plan to ensure everyone on the planet is protected by early warning system within the next 5 years UN Secretary General's High Level Expert Group on Net Zero Commitment published a report at COP27 serving as a how to guide to ensure credible accountable net zero pledges by industry financial institutions uh, cities and regions fine this is what are the major outcomes of the COP28 okay the G7 and G20 the vulnerable 20 learns the global shield against climate risk with a new commitment to uh, to uh, over uh, 200 uh, million usd and initial funding implementation to start immediately in a range of pathfinder countries announcing a total uh, of usd 105.6 million the new funding denmark finland germany ireland slovenia sweden switzerland and the ulan region of belgium stressed the need for even more support for the global environmental facility funds targeting the immediate climate adaptation needs of low lying and low income states the new indonesia just energy transition partnership announced at the g20 summit held in parallel with cop27 will mobilize usd 20 billion over the next 3 to 5 years to accelerate a just energy transition important progress was made on uh, forest protection with the launch of the forest and climate leader partnership which aims to unite action by government business and community leaders to halt uh, forest loss and land degradation by 2030 fine then uh, the next is about the uh, another topic about the tamil nadu gets its first biodiversity heritage site okay so a complete uh, we come across a new term called the biodiversity heritage site heritage site is one and biodiversity site is something different the tamil nadu government recently issued a notification declaring the uh, arita patti and the minakhipuram village in madurai district the first biodiversity site in the state so first biodiversity site heritage site in tamil nadu okay so was declared in the uh, district of madurai the site comprising 139.63 hectares in uh, Aritapatti village near the Melur block and 53.8 hectares in the Minakhipuram village Madurai East Taluk will be known as the Aritapatti Biodiversity Heritage Site said the notification. Aritapatti village known for its ecological and historical significance houses around 250 species of birds including three most important raptors, birds of prey uh, namely the uh, Lagar falcon, the uh, Sahin falcon and the uh, Bonnell eagle. Okay, it is also home to wildlife such as the Indian pang uh, pangolin, uh, splendid lorich, and the python, which are endangered. So they have uh, find the place over there. Okay, the, the uniqueness: some endangered uh, special uh, species are located over there. That the importance of this particular site. Uh, the uh, area is surrounded by a chain of seven hillocks and uh, insert bugs that serve as a water set. Uh, charging 72 lakes and 200 natural springs and three check dams. The Anaikudal tank built during the reign of Pandya's king in the 16th century is one among them. Several megalithic structures, rock cut temples, Tamil Brahmi inscriptions, and Jaina bead add to the historical significance of the region. In the biodiversity heritage site, the biodiversity heritage sites are areas that are unique, ecologically fragile ecosystem, terrestrial, coastal, inland and marine waters having a rich biodiversity. The biodiversity comprises any one or more of the component like species richness, wild and domesticated species or intra -specific, uh, specific categories. Fine. High endemism uh, is another feature. Presence of rare, endemic and threatened species, keynote species, species of evolutionary of significance, presence of wild ancestors of uh, domestic cultivated species or uh, land uh, race of or their varieties, past preeminence of biological components uh, represented by fossil weed and having cultural or aesthetic values, area with significant cultural, ethical or aesthetic value important for the maintenance of cultural diversity. Fine. Ok, 
Okay, so what is the section 37 of the Biological Diversity Act 2002? State government can notify in the official gadget the con in consultation with the local bodies area of biodiversity importance as biological uh, diversity uh, that uh, place. State government in consultation with the central government may frame rules for the management of the conservation of the BHS. Uh, that's fine. Uh, uh, state government can frame uh, schemes for uh, compensating or rehabilitating anyone economically affected by such notification and be compensated. State Biodiversity Board may invite suggestions for the declaration of uh, biodiversity uh, areas through the Biodiversity Management Committee and other relevant community institutions. Area having any of the following characteristics may uh, qualify for inclusion in the Biological uh, heritage sites. Okay, biological heritage sites. What are the criteria? Okay, so okay, then the next is uh, the criteria is freedom in the uh, the next news regarding the preliminary is about the India's uh, performance in the different indexes. Okay, the first is freedom in the world index. Okay, the EUI democracy index. Okay. Context Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, okay, ESC, okay, issued a uh, working paper by Sanjay Sanyal, member of ESC PM and Alka uh, Akankhya Arora. The paper analyzes three perception based indices freedom in the world, world uh, index, V dem indices, and EIU democracy index, which where India has uh, which, which are published recently and India's uh, performance or India's uh, ranking in the three indexes are not that uh, forthcoming. So, uh, the Economic Advisory Council Prime Minister member Sanjeev Sanyal and Akankhya Arora raised the issue with three reports towards India because in the, all the three reports, India has been shown very low. The working paper analyzes three perception based indices Freedom in the World Index, BDM Indices, and EID Democracy Index. And what are the uh, Indian uh, projection on that? The Freedom in the World Index and the Freedom Indexes has placed India at the same level as during the emergency of 1970. Moreover, India has been placed below countries like Northern Cyprus. Surely, this is not credible. There are serious problems with the methodology used in these perception based uh, indices. First, these indices are primarily based on the opinion of tiny group of unknown experts who so have given the opinion. Second, the questions that are used are subjective and are worded in a way that is impossible to answer objectively, even for a country, let alone compare across country. Third, there are questions that should be asked but are excluded. 
from while collecting the information as per the economic advisory council expert group fourth certain questions uh, used by these indices are not a appropriate measure of democracy across all country since these indices are input into world governance indicators the world bank should ensure greater transparency and accountability from these institutions okay and meanwhile independent india think tank so uh, uh, meanwhile independent indian think tank should be encouraged to do similar perception based indices for the world in order to break the monopoly of a handful of western institutions because these indices are prepared by a handful of western institutions and uh, uh, they are uh, credibility okay on the parameter they use for ranking so comes under so uh, thread at times fine okay so india should have its own institution which will uh, do similar uh, ranking and uh, coordinate with the global institutions that is what okay so let know about the freedom in the world uh, index 2022 freedom in the world is an annual global report on the political rights and civil liberty compared uh, composed of uh, numerical uh, ratings and descriptive texts for each country and a select group of territories the uh, 2020 edition covers developments in 195 countries and 15 territories from january 1 uh, 2021 through december 31 2021 The report has been published by the U.S. based non-profit organization Freedom House, which is funded by the U.S. government. Okay, political right indicators such as the electoral process, political pluralism, and participation and government functioning are the parameters. Civil liberty indicators related to freedom of expression and belief, associational and organizational rights, the rule of law, and personal autonomy and individual rights. Okay, are the parameters. uh then the next one uh, countries are declared as free partly free or not free and here india is declared as partly free as per this report so it declared india as partly free okay even indian democracy the largest in the world but oh. india has been branded as a partly free country okay so then indian position according to freedom house freedom in the world report okay india status uh, for the second consecutive year continued to not uh, completely free country giving it global freedom score of 66 out of 100 after judging it on various political rights and civil liberties in 2022 india has dropped a point to score 66 on 100 compared to 2021 while the report until 20 have called india a free country but right now it calling it partly free country the score are consistently dropping since 2017 
और यहाँ पे डिकेड है गो इंडिया स्कोर 77 आउट ऑफ 100 तो स्कोर ड्रॉप टू 75 इन 2019 71 इन 2060 एंड 66 इन द लास्ट ईयर दैट इज व्हाट इज बीइंग ओरी फॉर द गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज़ दिस पुट द गवर्नमेंट इन ए वेरी ऑक्वर्ड पोजीशन ग्लोबली फाइन नेक्स्ट इज हां इंडिया स्टेडियम स्कोर आर सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ द बोलिविया हंगरी अल्बानिया the country that have scored the most include South Sudan, Syria, Tibet, Turkmenistan, Eritrea, North Korea. 69 countries are currently not free worldwide. Uh, this makes the situation worse than 1973 when only 63 countries were not free. Apart from the worst score, the list also includes Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Thailand and Qatar. This is an increase from the last year where only 54 countries were not free. But this, this is growing again. That means the government, the country are not allowing the people to enjoy freedom in their own country by imposing uh, restrictions. The economic intelligence wing, Democracy Index 2022. The Democracy Index was started in 2006. It provides a snapshot of the state of democracy worldwide in 165 independent states and two territories. The index is based on 60 indicators grouped into five categories. Electoral process and pluralism, civil liberties, functioning of government, political participation, and political culture. Each country will be provided with a score of 0 to 10. These scores are decided based on the above indicators. Based on their score, every country is then classified into any one of the four types of uh, regime, such as full democracy, flawed democracy, hybrid uh, regime, and authoritarian regime for different category okay democracy means such as full democracy flawed democracy hybrid regime and authoritarian regime and indian uh, so it is so authoritarian democracy it is called in india has been banned as an authoritarian democracy so key finding of the latest report nari has topped the index india has been classified as a full democracy in this uh, india is ranked 46 uh, on the uh, 2021 index with an overall score of 6.91 it has been classified as a flawed democracy in 2022 india has ranked 53rd in the index less than half of the world's population now live in a democracy in uh, some sort a significant decline from 49.4 percent even fewer countries uh, reside in full democracy further more than a third of the world's population live under authoritarian rule with a share, uh, large share being in China. And the economic intelligence wing, the economic intelligence wing was uh, created in 1946. It is the re uh, research and analysis wing of the economist group and the world leader in global business intelligence. So, global organizations reporting this. Okay. The climate change performance index, India has been ranked among the top five countries in the world and the uh, best among the G20 countries based on its climate changing performance. India jumped two spurs higher and is now ranked eighth as per the climate change perception performance index published by the german watch a new uh, climate institute and uh, climate action network international based in germany the latest report of the ccip released at cop 27 in november 2022 shows denmark sweden and chile and morocco are the only four small countries that were ranked above india as a fourth fifth sixth and seventh respectively the first second and third ranks were not awarded to any country in effect, therefore, India's rank is the best among all large economies because India being such a vast country, so it is uh, placed uh, at uh, just um, at the fifth position globally because the first, second, third was not given, and uh, four, fifth, six, seven, and of the small countries, and eighth place is to a large country like India. This is the biggest uh, credit for India, you can say. Then the uh, CCP aims to enhance transparency in international climate uh, politics and enable uh, comparison of climate protection efforts and progress made by individual countries. Published annually since 2005, the Climate Change Performance Index is an independent monitoring tool for tracking uh, the climate protection performance of 59 countries and the European Union. Every year, the CCPI sets up important public and political debates within the countries uh, uh, assessed. The climate protection performance of these uh, 59 countries which together accounts for 92% of the global greenhouse gas emission is assessed in four categories. So what are the things? Uh, the greenhouse gas emission 40% and above score. Uh, okay. 
तो रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट ओवरऑल स्कोर एनर्जी यूज ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओवरऑल स्कोर क्लाइमेट पॉलिसी ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओवरऑल स्कोर सो हाउ दिस हंड्रेड इज डिवाइडेड फोर्टी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो ट्वेंटी 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 सिक्सटी एंड फोर्टी हंड्रेड इंडिया यार ने हाई रैंक इन द जी एच जी एमिशन एंड एनर्जी यूज कैटेगरी पहले मीडियम फॉर क्लाइमेट पॉल्यूशन रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी द एग्रेसिव पॉलिसी ऑफ द इंडियन टूर्स रैपिड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एंड रोबस्ट फ्रेमवर्क फॉर एनर्जी एफिशियंसी प्रोग्राम हैव शोन कंसिडरेबल इम्पैक्ट एज पर द सी सी पी आई रिपोर्ट इंडिया इज ऑन द ट्रैक टू मीट इट्स ट्वेंटी थर्टी एमिशन टारगेट ओके द रैंकिंग बिन बाई सी सी पी आई प्लेसेस इंडिया द ओनली जी ट्वेंटी कंट्री इन द टॉप टेन रैंक इनवन मिनिस्टर फॉर पावर एंड न्यू एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी हाइलाइटेड वेरियस डिमांड साइड फ्लैगशिप प्रोग्राम सच आर द उजाला पी ए टी स्कीम एंड स्टैंडर्ड एंड लेवलिंग प्रोग्राम दैट हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड सिग्निफिकेंटली टू दिस नोटेबल अचीवमेंट फाइन एंड देन द नेक्स्ट इज द ग्लोबल पार्टनर्स फॉर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड अंदर न्यूज सो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इज द कैचुअल राइट नाउ एंड एवरी कंट्री इज डूइंग रिसर्च ऑन दिस एंड Uh, and india has uh, joined this alliance so uh, france the outgoing council chair handed over the presidency to india at the third edition of the annual uh, global partnership on artificial intelligence uh, summit which began in tokyo recently the third edition of the annual global partnership on artificial intelligence summit began on 21st november 2022 in tokyo and handed over the presidency of the group to india the 2020 to 23 uh, by the outgoing council chair france at the summit which was concluded on 22nd november 2022 it was presented at pinned by uh, rajiv chandrasekhar the minister of steel uh, for state for electronics and technology okay so conference on uh, artificial intelligence or partnership on artificial intelligence okay india called upon member states of global partnership on artificial intelligence to work together for evolving a common framework of rules and guidelines about data governance to prevent user harm and ensure safety of both the internet and the artificial intelligence what is global partnership in artificial intelligence launched in june 15 2020 with 15 members the global partnership in artificial intelligence it describe at the uh, function of an idea developed within the g7 it is a multi stakeholder initiative on artificial intelligence which aims to uh, fill what it describe as the gap between 
theory and practice on artificial intelligence by supporting cutting edge course research as well as applied activities okay uh, on ai related priorities fine at the initiative facilitated international cooperation on artificial technology by bringing together on a single platform expert from fields such as science industry civil society government international bodies and academia who all are the member of this global alliance at present uh, this uh, has 25 member states australia belgium in the alphabetical order this australia belgium brazil canada czech republic uh, denmark france germany india ireland israel italy japan mexico netherland new zealand poland uh, south korea singapore slovenia spain uh, sweden the united kingdom in united states and the european union as single member the following members uh, founding members are australia canada france germany india italy japan mexico new zealand and republic korea singapore slovenia and the uk us and the european union so this is uh, the group globally on promoting artificial intelligence and how it can be used for the common people's benefit fine the g7 country uh, in uh, uh, this group are uh, canada france germany italy japan uk and the usa in addition the eu is a non uh, enumerated members of the g7 uh, where at the first two uh, summit held uh, montreal in canada hosted the inaugural summit uh, in in uh, 2020 followed by paris in 2021 the two uh, offices of the block are also located in the two cities which uh, one in each location what about this tokyo summit tokyo is the first asian city which hosted this summit being uh, held at uh, hotel chinjansu uh, tokyo in the japanese capital the meeting was discussed uh, for four themes was it responsible artificial intelligence over the four themes one is responsible ai and then comes uh, data governance future of work innovation and commercialization how did india get presidency of the 2021 23 election of the council chair india received more than two third majority of the first preferences vote and is followed by canada and the usa respectively however it is not known which seat will host the 2023 edition also in september next year the g20 summit will take place also in new delhi so uh, which indian city will host this artificial intelligence summit okay will be declared after uh, deliberation uh, within the government and the government will, will find or notify the exact location where the uh, summit on artificial intelligence okay will be held right then coming to the question uh, clean energy uh, is the order of the day describe briefly india's changing policy towards climate change in various international fora in the context of geopolitics indian climate change policy has undergone a significant change over the years from seeking energy security to taking initiative in the field of clean energy uh, at uh, global level the country's diplomatic stand the country's diplomatic stand uh, uh, at the conference of party reflects its pre environmental outlook but also because it is a pro environmental outlook so that means india is much concerned about the environment fine uh, by accepting the net zero commitments india has uh, reiterated its stand that its policy on climate change is based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibility okay as described by the uh, paris climate agreement india since ancient times has always promoted harmony with nature this can be future evidence by the country's commitment to the paris climate agreement we worship tree animals plants and that is our commitment historically to preserve the nature why right? uh, even we uh, worship animals and the plants okay so who are the integral part of the environment fine 
This can be further evidenced by the country's commitment to the Paris Climate Agreement, where we agreed that we will be reducing the uh, global uh, carbon emission by 33 to 5 percent by 2030. And recently, at the uh, next uh, uh, COP26, we agreed for the net zero target by 2030, uh, 30 up to 50 percent, and by 2070, complete to achieve the complete net zero level. Okay, providing that India is aware of the clean energy significance for itself and for the global uh, civilization fine uh, in this context the five point agenda of the uh, panchamrit uh, advocated by india for dealing with climate change including ambitious target related to use of renewable energy for meeting the country's energy requirement reduction in carbon emission and intensity in its economy and achieving the target of net zero are a clear statement by india of its commitment towards clean energy as well as its intent for taking a leading role in the same. India's geopolitical and global outlook based on the constantly evolving global environmental challenges can be witnessed by the country's diplomacy at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. India does not agree to the imposition of legally binding targets since it requires strategic autonomy because these are all voluntary organizations. The country should realize its uh, own responsibility and accordingly uh, must uh, commit itself to reduce the climate emission from its side. Fine. Uh, pursue its diplomatic development agenda. Identify the method required to commit to uh, target related to climate change and clean energy. India, keeping the ambition of enhancing its global profile and power ambitions, has moved away from a, a reactionary to a participatory approach. This can be seen with India's change in position from its response to the Kyoto Protocol commitment as compared to the Paris Agreement. Further, keeping in line with its diplomatic endeavors globally and the regions of clean energy significance, India has taken a leading role along with other major global players in several international initiatives such as the International Solar Alliance, One Sun, One World, One Grid program and the Lifestyle for Environment movement launched by the uh, global community for in this uh, uh, clean energy and green energy promotion major fine then uh, further india has also raised its concern regarding the reluctance of the developed nations in sharing the necessary technology with the developing nations to enable them to effectively deal with climate change thus india has modified its climate change policy according to the development taking place on a global scale and has taken initiative in mitigating issues arising out of climate change while keeping in mind its geopolitical objectives. Fine. Then to the uh, MCQs uh, with reference to the International uh, Union for Conservation of Nature, okay, uh, Natural Resources, uh, yeah, IUCN, and the uh, Conservation of International Trade and Endangered Species sites, which is the following statement here correct. IUCN is an organ of the United Nations, okay, so no, it's not an uh, UNF organ, uh, and site is an international agreement between the government, okay. This is incorrect. IUCN run thousands of field projects. Okay. IUCN run thousands of field projects. Uh, field projects uh, around the world to better manage a natural environment. Site is legally binding on the state that have joined it, but this convention does not take the uh, place of national law. So in this case, two and three are right. So answer will be B to question number one. Then coming to question number two, uh, with reference to global partners for artificial intelligence, which is the following statement which are correct. The first officially uh, projected by US and Canada at the uh, uh, G7 summit uh, in at uh, um, Bariz. Okay, so India assumed the chair of the global partners for artificial intelligence for a period of 20 to 23. It is uh, so. It is right. Uh, GAPI is a uh, congregation of 25 members, it is right. Okay, so 2 and 3. So here the answer is also B. That means 2 and 3 are the right answer. B, so B uh, is the correct answer for this. Then question number 3. Consider the following uh, statement regarding Asia elephants. More than 60% of the world's elephant population is in India. Fine. So that is right. Okay. Then uh, uh, Asian elephants are listed as critically endangered. No, they are not uh, mentioned like that. Elephant is natural heritage animal of India. Three is right. So one and three are right. Option will be C. One and three. So question number three, the right option is uh, C. Okay.
okay so this is see the right answer for question number 3 fine uh, then moving to question number 4 Consider the following statement with reference to climate change performance index. Uh, German Watch publishes the index biannually in cooperation with the New Climate Institute and the Climate Action Network International. Fine. So it is uh, not uh, correct. Uh, in the latest report, uh, India ranked improved by two positions and is among the uh, best because it has the eighth position and it is um, after the all the small country. So it is the eighth place. So. Two is the right answer. So option will be B is the right answer. So only two is correct. Okay. Then question number five. Uh, which country top the EIU Democracy Index 2022? It is uh, which country top? It is Norway. Top answer is D. Norway top the list. Okay. Then uh, question number six. With reference to biodiversity heritage sites, consider the following statement. These are area of rich biodiversity which lie outside the protected area network. They are notified only by central government, but after consultation with the state government. So uh, it is not because they are not notified by the uh, central government, but by the state government. Fine. Uh, they are created under the Biological Diversity Act 2002. So two is incorrect. One and three are correct. Okay. So one and three are correct, and four is also uh, uh, incorrect. Okay. So that means one and three. That is option B. Then question number seven. reference to india from the following central acts import and export control act 1947 mining and mineral development regulation act 1957 customs act 1962 indian forest act 1927 which of the above relevance bearing on the biodiversity conservation of the country fine so question number 7 so all these have their relevance to the biodiversity conservation 1 2 3 4 so see the right answer then uh, coming to 8 with reference to the loss and damage term used in the context of climate change Consider the following statement. The term for the first time uh, coined in the recent UNFCCC 27. Fine, COP 27. No, it's it's uh, not correct. Okay, so uh, it is damage caused by the climate action taken uh, can be sustained by the people. No, so support to the countries. It is caused by the extreme weather conditions like cyclone and droughts. Okay, so three is the right option is D. Then nine question number nine. Uh, Gutti Koya tribes recently seen in news are in which states? They are they uh, live in all Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, and Telangana. Fine. Then coming to the last question, question number ten. Okay. With reference to Indo-Pacific regional dialogue, the following statement is being led by the National uh, Maritime Foundation, uh, which is the Indian Navy's knowledge partner. The Indo-Pacific regional dialogue. Okay. Uh, it is right. Uh, is Indian Navy's early recording top level international companies. Uh, geared at the Indian Navy strategic level, so this is also the right answer. So for this question number ten, answer will be uh, C. Both one and two are correct. This way today's discussion on the Delhi current affairs is over. So keep on watching every day. So to update yourself on the most updated development date wise. Thank you for watching. जी जो सही पर